start from the top. We, I guess we can't adjourn and then restart, but it is, it is now 7.05 and we're going to start for real. I think we've had, the minutes may reflect a certain amount of stumbling around. Um, I am, I'm Zach Sullivan, I'm the Planning Commission Chair. I'm Clarence Butler, I live on Brazier Road. Mark Lane, Gould Hill Road. Scott? Scott Hess, Planning Commission member, remotely watching. Uh, Lauren Oates, Center Road, also Planning Commission member. Kiana Petito, Horn in the Moon Road, Planning Commission member, and I'll pass it to Spencer. Hi, Spencer Hardy, uh, Planning Commission from Dillon Road. So I'm sorry, I'm up on I'm up on North Street. If it matters, actually in California, but live residing in North North Street. And so for, for members of the public, I see we have Alice Agney and um, Alice, who do you have with you? My almost 60 year husband, Richard. Well, welcome. Thank you. Um, I see, is that Ron Koss? Yes, it is, hi. And, um, yeah, I see someone labeled as you know, Gregory Weimer, who is still connecting. Um, I don't know if that's Gregory Carey. Um, I know I've corresponded with with you, you know, leading up to this. So I, I have some some sense of who's there. We'll we'll confirm who we have. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, in a moment. So we are, you know, the way the way we are going to to run this. Just to I, you may have seen the agenda. We we're just going to quickly introduce ourselves. Um, see who we have here. Um, I'm going to do a brief overview of the of the proposed changes. We will then you know, take you know, the primary purpose of the hearing is to take public comment. So we will take you know, we, we'll, we'll take public comment um, at that point. We will then adjourn the hearing and immediately open a meeting at which we you know, we will you know, the, which is for the planning commission members to discuss the. You know the you know, you know the feedback we've received. You know to you know in large part to decide if we do you know do want to make you know changes to the proposed amendments before sending them to. Um, which you should be able to see on the screen. <laughs> this is also available on the town website. So there are really two big sections that we that we've changed. well one one, se one section that's entirely new and then one section that we've changed and then there are a few minor edits. Um, the first really big you know, set of changes is we have added a section to Chapter Six, which deals with infrastructure that guides development of telecommunication towers. Um, we are primarily thinking about cell towers in this regard, but it's not exclusively cell towers. This could be uh, you know, your towers that hold other radio equipment. If you know, unlikely someone would put in a TV tower, but radio equipment is certainly a possibility. Um, you know, any, anything else for telecommunication that would go on a tower would be covered by this. Um, it's, you know, we have, a, we have a background section to show, to sort of talk through what is going to guide the town actions. We then have you know, criteria for preferred siting and criteria for areas that we want to restrict. Um, this very much you know, mimics what we did in the energy section, which immediately precedes this, you know, which deals with preferred siting and um, you know, areas to be avoided you know, for, particularly for renewable energy. We also made some corrections to the scenic resources section, which is in chapter nine. Um, this is, it, you know, my case, we did some minor updates around just clarifying some of the thinking behind, you know, what constitutes a foreground area. Um, there were also some areas where, you know, you know, you know some residents discovered errors in the town plan, um, pieces where there, you know, where we had left certain things out and you know, when the original town plan was adopted. And so those have been put in. Um, there are also then new goals, policies, and actions. Those go into chapter, 
you know, 11, but they are also, you know, parts of the, the new sections. So to go through a little bit of the background, as of, as of now, there are no freestanding cell towers in town. Um, there, you know, there have been two proposed over the years, um, one fairly recently, one a, a few years ago now. Um, we have, you know, we were, Uh, maps of cell reception quality that were produced you know, for us by the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, which show for certain carriers, you know, there's you know, some areas of goods, some that, that are really, you know, that are much more mixed in terms of cell reception quality. We also looked at some of the, you know, data, you know, statewide at the sh at shifting reliance on cell phones. And there's particularly, you know, you know over the past 10 years, you know, this data is showing a really significant shift towards families that are either primarily or solely reliant on cell phones, you know, for their telecommunications. Um, you know, uh, yeah, particularly among younger people, a real increase in the you know in the numbers that don't have landlines at all. Yeah. Finally, we provide an overview of some of the regulatory process, particularly around health. Um, this primarily deals with federal law, um, though it does it does talk a little bit about the, you know, the, the process before the Public Utility Commission. This is this is primarily for future planning commissions and for the townspeople to help us understand what what we are and are not able to regulate. You know, so that when you know if there's you know, you know if there's been turnover on the commission, if there's you know if there are new people in town who haven't gone through this process before, when a, towers propose, we will have that as some basic guidance of what, you know, you know, where we can act and where we can't. Looking at areas that we have, that we are proposing as preferred sites, um, you know, this is a lot of this is taken from, you know, you know, you know from what is done in a lot of, these, a lot of other towns plans, um, or, or is just proposed for, for land use planning generally. Um, you know, obviously the first choice is to co-locate on an existing tower. So if there, if there is an existing tower and there's actually a law about this as well, that, you know, you know, the carrier needs to attempt to co-locate there. If there is existing infrastructure, that is also a, you know, a preferred site. Historically, you know, people have talked a lot about using farm silos if for cell tower. And there is one farm silo that is having a, you know, you know is, you know, you know, is having a receiver put on. We, we also know that there are, the silos are being used less and less and actually being taken down. And so this is, this is maybe less viable going forward, but there are still some pretty significant barns in town. There are, there may be other commercial infrastructure that, or other large infrastructure that would be able to host a tower. Um, and then finally areas where we can use the topography and we can use tree cover you know, to really try to shield the view. So even when there is some pretty, you know, even when the tower may be significantly prominent above tree line, to look for places where that can be hidden, you know, by, you know, you know, you know by other tree cover, you know, just based on where you would be standing to look at it. Um, we've actually provided an example, a visual example of that. You can see from this that you sort of have a, you know, a, you know, if you're looking up from the road, you know, if you, you know, if your view is shielded by trees going back beyond those trees, a tower could extend above tree line and still be hidden. Looking at unsuitable areas, I mean the, you know, you know, the, the first big one is the village areas. This is specific to towers, not to transmitters. So there are, you know, in, mo in most urban areas, you know, we have, or even, you know, what we, we have small urban areas included. You know, transmitters tend to be on top of buildings. They tend to be hidden. Um, the city center in Mont building in Montpelier, for example, has a transmitter on. I believe the most of the hospitals have transmitters on them. So you can put, you know, a transmitter in in, in the village, but not, you know, but it ha but we're asking that it need to be hidden. Um, the second piece we're trying to restrict are significant scenic views. Um, particularly in the foreground of those views, the foreground is defined as the first half mile, um, and the reason for that is that the 
you know, there is re research on visual perception showing that, you know, within a half mile, you really see detail. You know, if you've got one of those fake tree cell towers in the first half mile, you are going to really know it's a fake tree. Um, and then depending on how prominent it is, as you go farther, you start to lose that detail. Um, we are, we are asking, looking to avoid ridge lines, which is also something that I think early on, a lot of towers were built on ridge lines and, and and you know many places are moving away from that. And then finally, you know, because you're talking about a very tall piece of infrastructure that could potentially fall, you know, to avoid any areas where the tower could could damage homes, you know, sensitive environments, other people's property, if it were to fall. Hey Zach, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I don't know if you intend to do this, but would you mind screen sharing your presentation? I know it's publicly accessible, but it might help with folks online to follow along. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. I had it up on the screen in the room. And so I thought, was that being captured or, or is it just hard to see? It's, we, it's, we can't really see the screen from here. And so we thought maybe if, if you could share it. Okay. Your, I, like, I apologize for that. I will. Yeah, That's fine. That you were being descriptive and we knew the presentation, but maybe for others. Thank you. Okay, how, how is that? You're looking at, okay, good. Um, Great. And actually sort of good timing because this is where it gets really sm small and hard to read. And this is something that you were probably, you may want to look either at the presentation or these are in the documents themselves. I have put the full text of the new goals, policies and, act and actions. So specific to cell towers, the first goal, you know, the goal for this section is to enable all areas of East Montpelier to have adequate cell service coverage to meet the needs of residents, businesses, and emergency service providers while protecting the town's scenic and natural resources. Um, and then the policy that goes with that is East Montpelier supports cell service infrastructure that enables adequate cell service coverage in all areas of town that is cited and designed to protect the town's scenic and natural resources. Um, I realize those two are almost identical. The, there was some, I think in terms of thinking about how we would approach the PUC, you know, in a, you know, in a case where we were intervening, you know, I think, you know, the thinking was that there is value of having this both as a goal and as a formal policy, um, you know, because sometimes we do need to, we would need to come in with a policy statement. Hey, Zach, hey Zach, why don't you share that one? We still have this suitable, just the cell towers on suitable areas. Do you want to put up the new goals? Sure. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I thought it had advanced and it clearly had not. Okay. Um, Sorry, I don't know why that is not advancing when I, so are you looking at that there? We, we got it now, new goals, policies, okay. and actions. Very good. Um, I just did a terrible presenter thing and read my, read my entire slide. So you, you, you do have the information, but you can refer back. Um, for the actions, the, the first action is to file for intervener status and or submit public comments on section 248A applications before the Public Utility Commission that do not meet the siting and design criteria designed in the town plan and in the zoning. And so the basic thinking behind that action was to bind the, you know, you know this planning commission or a future planning commission to say, these are our rules and we need, we do need to step up and defend them. Um, the second action is to consider whether conducting an inventory of suitable cellular facility locations would be beneficial for both the town and cellular carriers and whether grant funding for such a study is available. Um, this is basically to, you know, we opted at this point to not conduct a full inventory uh, you know, and, and essentially choose places in town where cell towers could be play placed or would be advised. Um, the, th the thinking is that that is a that's a significant undertaking. That requires a lot of expertise. It would take a lot of time. It would probably take a multi-town effort. Um, 
But at the same time, it is an idea that we didn't want to just let drop. And so the thinking here is that this will be something the plan, for the planning condition to deal with when we adopt the next town plan. And at that point to, to decide whether it is in the town's interest to conduct an inventory, you know, you know, or to, you know, you know, you know, you know and, and to actually identify specific locations that would be beneficial or not. So did the slides just advance to scenic views updates? No, okay. Yes. They, they did for us, they didn't for the people watching at home. They have now, they just it's did. just a delay. I apologize. Okay, are we on scenic views now? Very good. Okay. So the so the updates for, for scenic views, the corrections we made, there were, you know, the town plan has both a table and a map showing, you know, where where the significant scenic views areas are. There was once there was one section that was included in the table, but not in the map, um, which was on County Road. That has now been added to the you know, to the map. There was another area on, you know, at the intersection of Jacobs Road and Horn of the Moon Road um, that was in the map, but not on the table. And so that is now on both. We also, we have not designated the East Mount Hiller Trail System as a potential, you know, you know, as formal scenic view areas, but we did, we did add some language recognizing that those are areas that might be considered scenic views and that should probably, you know, because those are permanently protected, you know, for use by the public. And so while the, while the, while the, while the existing language only points to roadsides, yeah, you know, we wanted to include those as public areas as well. Um, we, as I mentioned before, we put in clarification of the reasoning for the foreground definition you know, talking about why, you know, what the research is on why half a mile is important. And then also in the review with the, from the Regional Planning Commission, you know, they, they flagged the fact that their, you know, the scenic view language, you know, doesn't apply solely, you know, just to, you know, communications towers. There are also some significant concerns about large, you know, large solar power projects and that we needed a better definition of what constituted a large solar project. And so that has been, you know, updated. That is based on the um, kilowatt hour, you know, you know, that is based on the power output, which are the criteria the Public Utility Commission uses as well. Sorry, I'm gonna go do my manual, you know, you know updating, yeah. Advance it again. And that did not, that did not advance. Are you looking, you're not looking at the new, new action. Okay. Yeah, we saw the new action, Zach. I think it's okay. just a delay on our end. Okay, a, a different thing showed up on my screen. So I apologize <laughs> for that. You would think that this far into the pandemic, we would have this down, but I, I am sorry. No worries. Okay, so so in the last no, on my screen it keeps going to the. Yeah. Okay, we'll just keep it there. Um, you know, the, the the last new action is you know again this is another one that we're not taking, not making a change now, but essentially putting something on the to do list when the next when the town plan is next updated, you know, in a couple couple of years, um, when, when we'll start, is to review the. You know, to do a really solid review of the significant scenic views, and to particularly consider permanent 
permanently conserve trails as potential scenic views as well. We know that a lot of that, the trail land is, for, is pretty heavily forested. Um, there is some that's real working landscape that comes out right, right by the town garage and goes under power lines and such. But there are also areas that are really significant, that are significant views there. And so to include that as an, you know, part, essentially part of the public infrastructure and to consider whether that's something that we want to be protecting as well. That concludes the presentation. I don't know if people have specific questions on the presentation itself before we move into taking public comment. No, all right, not seeing any. So do you know, so at this point I will now open the floor. There aren't there aren't too many people go on, so we certainly have time, time to take public comment. We don't need to do this in a super formal way. We don't need to take a list of who's gonna speak when or whatnot. Um, so I guess I will just take hands. Um, you can also use the raise hand you know, you know, icon within Zoom in order to ask to be recognized. Um, yes, Ron? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. You're Thank you for doing all this work. Uh, I know that it's been a process. I was somewhat involved last year, and um, I live in the Horn of the Moon area off of Sanders Circle. Um, and I have a, maybe a few questions. Sorry, in a Ron, few we're having an audio problem in the room. What's that? I, I just switch it to my mic. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay. Give us one moment. We will we'll get this back up. I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we hear it fine online. All right, All right Ron, I, I apologize for that, Ron. You should be good to go now. That's okay. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Um, so one question I have is, has the reception maps that you showed, uh, have they been validated? I mean, that, you know, that they're representing AT&T and Verizon uh, in the town. And I'm just wondering, have they actually been, has there been an evaluation or to validate the accuracy of, of these maps? I don't, I, I don't know if validation is the right, I mean, we, you know, the East Oak Pillar Planning Commission has not validated them. What I will say is that those were, those maps were not produced by the carriers. Those were produced by the state. I forget which agency did it. They were, it, it actually came out of a conflict between the state and the carriers where the state did not believe what the carriers were saying about the cell reception. And so they sent someone around basically to drive every single road in the state with a car equipped with, I think, six cell phones and a computer that was logging their, you know, you know, their reception all, all the time. And so, so I think if your question is really about, did this, did this come from an independent source? That, that, is where, that is how that data was collected. Okay, I mean, the reason that, that I think obvious reason that this is really important is that, that when a tower um, location is um, considered, you know, one of the critical reasons to locate that tower is to serve areas that are poorly served. And um, I just think that, that um, it's, you know, I think it would be interesting um, to like I like in the Horn of the Moon here where I am. I really um, I question whether what was being represented on that map was accurate. So anyway, I'll just make that comment and ask that question and and leave it at that. Um, one thing that that um, I think is missing that I think is very important, and I understand that. Some things may be outside of the jurisdiction of the planning commission, the town, et cetera. But I think that to not identify property values 
uh, as a variable or something that needs to be or should be considered uh, in the siting of a tower, I think is a, is a big uh, oversight. I mean, many, many people have their primary assets uh, and their futures um, tied into their real estate. And the impact that a tower could have on property values is significant. And I just think, I don't really understand how it could be completely, um, at least not acknowledged in some way, uh, even if it falls outside of some jurisdiction. That's one comment. All right, thank you, Ron. Do we do we have do we have other you know, people who would like to comment? Um, I just say, well said, thank you. And is You're that welcome. Carrie? Yes, that's me. Thank you. Great, thank you. It's a different name on the screen. I just want to confirm who we have giving us feedback. Oh, sure. Sorry, it's my husband. Yeah. Um. And do we do we have anyone else who would, you know, you know, you know, you know, Alice and Richard? I know you've you've been on as well. I don't didn't know if you would like to give comments as well. Um, I think that uh, Ron's last point is uh, it should be considered. It's important. All right, thank you. I also think that we have to be very careful about our scenic views. They are the one of the drawing cards for the state of Vermont. All right, thank you. All right, we have. Um, I realize right. at this point we have gone around the horn. There, we're not. We're not going to put a hard prohibition on. Ron just, what Ron is another, I was just going to say. I was actually just going to say we have time for more. So yes. Yeah, we're, we're, I, I have another comment. If there isn't anybody else who 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 hasn't spoken who wants to. Yep. Go ahead. I understand that safety is falls outside of. The town's jurisdiction, and I understand that it's um, um, part of uh, uh, of an FCC rule that goes back to 1996. My comment here is that even though I understand that it falls outside of the jurisdiction of the town and is is um, directed or guided by this 1996 regulation, this is almost heading towards a 30 year old regulation. And I think that I think that the, there should be something in the town plan that acknowledges the, you know, the jurisdiction issue, uh, but also acknowledges that um, that the that the town should, you know, in the event that there is some concern that becomes an issue or raised, that the, that the town will consider it. And I just think that, you know, in this day and age to uh, not acknowledge uh, or in some way just drive a small stake in the ground and say, yeah, we understand this safety thing is not our jurisdiction, but we are also concerned uh, for the safety of the town. And sometimes um, things that are, you know, from another jurisdiction uh, are dated, overlooked, or ill-considered. I just think that the town should should have some sort of uh, recognition of safety in some way that doesn't conflict with the jurisdictional thing. Uh, the last, my last comment is, um, you know, there. I think there was a reference to two tower um, proposals that have happened in this town so far, and the, the last one was last year, and. Um, 
you know, I was involved in that. And, um, you know, and I know that they're in that they're new planning commissioners now. And I just want to say that in the Horn of the Moon area on Jacobs Road, that process cost this little area 40,000 bucks to stop the tower. Basically, we bought, uh, we had to, we had to raise that money in order to address the issue. And I think that it would be very interesting. And I wish that the planning commission would use the Jacobs Road situation as a, as a opportunity to see how it would um, use the, the uh, regulations and, and everything that's new in considering whether the town would be an intervener in an application such as the one that happened here. Uh, I really think it, I think it's an incredible opportunity to really see whether um, you know the town would have approved the location of the tower. And and I'll stop there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Do we? You know, do we have anyone else who'd like you know, who's thought of additional things they'd like to add? No, not, not seeing any. I'll give you know, give one more chance. I don't know, you know, you know, Alice and Carrie, if you just, if you two just want to come off mute so I can make sure that I'm I you know, oh. you know that I'm not be skipping you for because of technical issues. Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm sorry. I did come up with something. This is this is Kari's husband, Greg, and um, we, you know, a few years ago, we also had a, a potential tower going in where we live in the center, you know, in East Montpelier Center, and the the neighbors all got together, and we were able to to figure out a way to keep it from happening. But what was shocking to me was that one person one landowner who ironically doesn't even live, you know, right in the proximity of where the tower was, had the power to, to affect other people's property, their well-being, potentially their health, their mental well-being. Um, and there was just, and property values, I think I mentioned that, but um, with no, um, no way of checking that, you know, we were, it, it, we, in a way we got lucky and, and some of our neighbors stepped up and really did everybody here a favor and we were able to stop it from happening, but it very easily might've happened. And that tower would have gone up, if memory serves, about 800 feet from our house and from our kids. And it would have been a massive eyesore for everybody here in the East Montpelier Center area. And what, and I've said it already, but you know, the thing that got me was you know, how can one person who doesn't really even live in this, he lives in this area, but not right immediately here. How can, how can somebody just arbitrarily take, you know, accept an offer from, in this case, I believe it was AT&T and with, without any real way of, of, of checking that, of stopping that, you know, our lives, our day-to-day -day lives. And I know that it's been deemed safe by everybody, but that's a question mark. You know, a lot of things were deemed safe years ago that have proven to not be safe, like asbestos, lead paint, on and on and on. So there are things that we just don't know about it yet. And also the property value issue. And what got me was like, like well, how can one person who doesn't really even live here affect our lives so negatively? You know, I mean, I got to live with this thing in my backyard. I mean, literally in my backyard with with who who knows i mean I, I was worried about my kids safety if my kids god forbid get cancer you know in 30 years you know and what, I, what what i have said well what is it from the cell tower you know so anyways the, the shocking thing to me was that one person could have so much power where the rest of us who have to live with it more intimately than than this other person did uh we have to live with it and there's nothing we can do about it go ahead karen Oh, yeah, I don't know if I remember what I was going to mention, but um, oh, I don't I don't remember. Sorry. So anyways, I've, I've said my my piece and that that was what got me and and it's going to keep coming up. I mean, I know we need better cell reception in Vermont and I know we need 
Oh, I, I remember. <laughs> I remember what I was going to say, but just everyone, the landowners and everyone in this area that would be immediately affected by that, none of us were complaining about the lack of cell service. There is there, there isn't great cell service, but it we we took that into account about living in Vermont. It's you know, we we made our own adjustments. It wasn't an area where, as far as I knew, anyone was concerned about it. So it, it wasn't to meet our needs. Yeah, I think I think that's it. It's just it's just the, the, the what was I found shocking, what I found appalling was just that one person, it could be anybody, it could be a landowner that doesn't even live in the state of Vermont, theoretically, can just throw up a can take can accept an offer from a from a company like like AT and T, and do all of his or her neighbors a real disservice, you know. And and there's more to it than just the property values, although that's a big one, you know. But we have to live with this thing looming in our backyard, not really knowing. You know, sure, it's people say it's safe, but not really knowing, you know, that it is or not. And I've got to live with this for the rest of my life. And, uh, you know, that 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 what, what what really got to me. And that is what I would like to see considered f before, you know, these these are just thrown up, uh, you know, in somebody's backyard. And I and I realize that they may be in somebody's backyard any any, you know, and, it's always going to be maybe in somebody's backyard, but I think more thought needs to go into to that. And I believe you were hitting on that earlier in the meeting. Um, ways like let's not just throw them up on a ridge line because it's a high place to put one. But um, I felt like I felt very powerless with something that's going to affect my life uh, very, very profoundly. So that that's it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> that's probably enough. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Do we, do we have any other comments before we adjourn this portion and move on to, you know, to, to the next to our, the next portion of our meeting? Uh, I would just say thank you for the work you've done. Um, it, it it's a it's a wonderful start. It's an excellent start. Um, I think that the comments from Greg and Carrie and from Ron have underlined the fact that there are um, there's more to consider than um, just having um, service available on every square inch of Vermont. Thank you. So I will, I will put a last call for any further comments. And if not, I will accept a motion to, yeah, you know, if, if there are no further comments, then you know, I will actually need a motion to adjourn the hearing. Um, though we will not be going away. We just have to formally adjourn and then formally call a meeting to uh, the next meeting to order. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn the hearing. Do we have a second? Um, Claire, all right, looks like Gianna seconded. Um, not an item for discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? No. All right, so it is you know, 743. The, the formal hearing relating to the town plan amendments is now adjourned. Um, so now at 743, I will call the planning commission meeting to order. Um, do we have any, I realize this is a funny format, I apologize. Do we have any changes to the agenda? Not seeing any changes to the agenda. Do we have any public? Not seeing any public comment. All right, do, so the, you know, the one, the one substantive item we have on the agenda for today is to discuss the public feedback from the town, from, you know, from the hearing that we just held. So I think at this point, I will just open it up to see you know, who would, you know, if anyone would like to, to start us off, you know, in, in thinking about how to respond, you know, in, or do we, do we want to just immediately open up? Or actually, I'm, I'm sorry, we, let me, I, I do also want to you know, mention that we do, we have also received some comments in writing 
which I have forwarded to everyone. So we received, you know, we had received comments in writing from Kari actually back in February. I forwarded those at that point. Those were primary, that was primarily research related to property values. I forwarded those then. I resent them, you know, uh, you know, just after our last meeting, so a couple of weeks ago. So everyone's got a chance to have a chance to see them, just sort of connect the dots. That's the same, same person. You know? We also received a very short comment from Andy Shapiro, just saying he, you know, you know he's you know, thank you for the work that he supports, you know, the you know, the amendments as proposed. And then you know, today at about five, so hopefully people have had a chance to see it. Then we also received a comment from Julie Potter, you know, also expressing support for the, you know, you know, for the work. You know, we did. The one other comment that I'll make before opening up. So we, you know, at, at our last meeting, knowing that we had the written comments about property values, we had also considered the question of should we, like what we should consider the question of should we include something about property values in the reg, in the regulation section? And at that point, we thought some of us thought that there the property values were not something that we were allowed to consider. Um, we did, Claris and I both went back and did some research. We discovered that was not entirely true. Um, the, the criteria that the, plant, the Public Utility Commission you know, you know, is tasked with evaluating are entirely silent on property values. Um, so we really don't know what that, you know, you know, whether that is something they can take or, or not. We, do, we did also find in the meeting, in the minutes of our meeting on fe of February 4th, 2021, um, which is the meeting that Dan Burke, who was the attorney from the public service department attended, you know, he, you know, he had been asked that issue, about that issue explicitly and said that the, the property values are not something that the Public Utility Commission um, you know, considers. But it was certainly a weaker statement than his statement about health concerns. The statement on health concerns was that the, pub, the PUC is not even allowed to take testimony, um, whereas on property values, it was simply that they don't, you know, they don't, you know, as a matter of practice, they don't consider them. Uh, and so I don't, you know, you know, I, I think in terms, you know, in terms of do we want to include in the regulation section, it's probably still an open question. But I wanted to get give, get everyone up to speed on the research that we had done. Zach, can I ask a clarifying question on that? Um, yeah. I thought there was a distinction in what the Public Utility Commission considers and what's allowed in like the town plan, like what deference is allowed in the town plan? So do you mean that if it's in the town plan, they'll ignore it? Or is that a separate thing? Like they're not gonna consider property values, but if it's in the town plan and they're giving deference to that, maybe it would be clustered in. I got the strong sense that it was, that they would just ignore it either way. Claris, you're nodding. Yeah. Is that your recollection yeah, as well? Recollection. And if you look, you know, I don't know that this has really been, it's, it's not nearly as settled an issue as the, the health, as the health issues, which is pretty clear laid out in federal law. But if you look at the criteria that they have, that, you know, Vermont law does state out the lay out the criteria that they need to look at. And it's a number of environmental factors. Um, you know, look at his, you know, you know, at areas with historic value. Look at areas with with significant scenic value. That is all spelled out in the law. And so, you know, the fact that we, the fact that we are proposing something that puts, you know, has strong language about historic area, about scenic area, and you know, and has defined this. It you know, has a section of the town plan you know, defining those scenic areas. That is something that they would give significant deference to. Um, you know the fact that it's that we're protecting the village area. That's the you know you know the or the, the more historic town centers. That's something that the, you know is you know where the plan that we have clearly matches Vermont law in terms of what they you know you know what they need to consider. Um, and I think the I think there's just not much said about property values, quite frankly.
Yeah, that's interesting um, to know that change or a slight update. And I guess I'm curious if other towns have addressed property values and how they have, because I, you know, I, I think in my head, I'm wondering how do they, how would they quantify that? Would they have someone come up and, and say, well, that's not visible from here. You've got some trees behind your house. So no, this won't impact, you know, like, I guess just like, how do they, um, yeah, measure that and how to have towns sort of written that language. I don't, Can you hear us, Zach? We lost you. Hello. It was such a great Hello? comment that the world froze. I know. <laughs> I feel like I'm way with bated breath. Like, what? <laughs> what is the answer? Well, maybe they went back to Bethel, just like the uh, <laughs> like the little icon says for Martha, I guess. <laughs> Zach, hello. All right, so, sorry about that. Are, are we back? Okay. Such, such, such a good plan to have a, you know, you know, you have real, real cameras in here. It's, you know, the, the room is not cooperating. Um, so we did look at a number of other town plans when we were starting this process to see what other towns had done to see what we could take and really did not find much. Um, I would, didn't find much in general. I would say that the plan, that the, the chap, the section that we are putting forward is far more comprehensive than anything else I've seen. Um, and I don't remember seeing anything related related to property values in those other plans. Or related to housing. Yeah. I am trying I am trying to be quiet so that I give the rest of you a chance to speak, but it, it means we need you know, <laughs> the, the, the point the point of an out of towner um although it rubs us all wrong and i'm in total and i'm in total agreement it hasn't stopped um companies or or out, outside investors coming in with uh with pvs for you know for putting putting a raise in and uh and getting the tax write-offs and whatnot um it, it's a great point and would certainly irk me too if somebody had a piece of property and they came for one month a year at the most or a week and put something up that adversely affected me but from that aspect i don't really know if there's, there's really probably not much that we can do um for somebody that's a, a permanent resident in east montpelier versus somebody that's part-time or owns a, v, a vacant piece of land and wants to just buy it to put that up i, I assume clarice everybody else zach on that on that point yeah i mean personally i would be hesitant to start trying to get into regulating based on where where someone had come from So we've we've talked, you know. So as we, we've talked around the property. So as I see the the comments that we received, I mean, there was a initially there was this big section on property values. We also have the, you know, you know the, um, you know, also the written comments on that. Um, we have some questions it's about safe, you know, safety as well. Do we think we know? You know, you know, you avoid that for the moment. But I think to on so we we did address the the rate regulation of safety in the town 
you know, in how we would deal with property values, e either to the regu regulation section to, to speak to. Hey, Zach, what you froze for a little bit. Do you want to go back and say how we address safety? Yes. Yeah, so, so I was just saying, so we have spoken to the question of you know, regulation of sa you know, safety in the, you know, in the proposed amendment. You know, we have not spoken to property values at all. Do we want to speak to property values either in that regulation section or somewhere else? Well, I think to Gianna's point, the two, she made two points. Um, one was, do other towns mention this? And the other was, how would we even quantify the impact? And I imagine like most assessments, it would be based on comparables, which might be really challenging just given the general lack of this type of infrastructure, uh, one in our town, but also across the state. So I don't know if we do try to address it, how we do that without knowing what the the actual um, like metric or quantification measure would be. Yeah, there have been there have been some study. I mean, there 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 have been some studies done on it. Honestly, not many. Um, they of the studies that I have seen, I would not call any of them particularly high quality. Um, there was. And, and some of them, in fact, say, you know, you know, point on aggregate to an increase in property value, you know, when a cell tower. I don't know if he knows the very language. In I don't terms know. of the evidence that I have seen so far, I don't know that it's strong. So, Scott, you were going to say something? No, no, you just, you, you, uh, we, we, we lost some of your uh, verbiage there. We, you blanked out a little bit. Oh, sorry about that. I was, I was just saying that of the, you know, of the studies that we have seen, they're methodologically, a lot of them are not great. And, you know, some, some of them in fact point to an increase in property values with the addition of a cell tower. Um, not, not huge impacts, but it's, yeah, but th but that's the direction some of them run, and so it's not. It's really not clear to me what evidence we would point to, you know, if we were going to make an argument that it that the, that a tower would decrease property values, um, particularly if the you know, yeah, particularly if the guidance looking at visual impact, you know, had had really been addressed. I mean, I think there is an interesting, we, we all know this in these sort of, in these issues, in these planning issues where there's like the pocket of immediate adjacent neighbors that are directly impacted and then the broader who aren't impacted but may benefit. And so there is this, like, there's always this tension between those two pieces, right? And it's an interesting question if, maybe we don't necessarily have to put it in citing, but some consideration of net benefit, um, you know, that we would support some consideration of net benefit. And, and maybe that's documenting like how many more people would get cell service versus the, like, I don't know. I don't know if we would need to dictate that or even have a way to suggest like how that is quantified back to Lauren's point, but, um, but maybe that there is something in the narrative that could be placed there that we recognize the tension and that we we support projects that can offer an uh, benefit. Gianna, we've residents. lost our audio again. All right. You're back. You're back. Can you hear me? I can, I can hear you. Yes. Sorry about that. That's OK. I can see your chat. That's good. <laughs> I don't know where you are. I guess I was saying maybe maybe it could fit in the narrative that we recognize the tension and that we would be more supportive of proposals that can demonstrate the net benefit for town residents. How 
How would we measure that? Well, I don't know. I don't know if we would have to dictate that or we'd have to say, like, convince us. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, but, but I, but it's, it's interesting that people have been silent on it and it strikes me like the, the health one is very clear. Like, we're not allowed to do it. We shouldn't do it. Like, and I did hear, you know, prior planning commission members that if we put it in, it sort of makes, makes them question the strength of the full plan. And so we don't want to risk that. But if they've been silent on this and there's like requests from the citizens to explore this, that's sort of, I guess that's just the tension that's in my mind, right? The tension is the trade-off, the cost-benefit trade-off and the interest in sort of en masse does do the residents benefit. Gianna, we, sorry, we lost you again. Just that's, that's so no, she weird. can't because I unmuted myself. That's so weird. That's so weird. We can hear her <laughs> online the whole time. Um, do we want to? S <laughs> Maybe we should have just two separate meetings. Those of us online and those of those of in the room. <laughs> they should leave the room since there are no members of the public there and just join Zoom independently. You've got a good point there, Laura. <laughs> Sorry, I, know, we are... I think it's because Orca is recording that they have to do something about the room recording. This is going to have millions and millions of hits from Orca. It's just going to over, overrun their servers when everybody get kids wins of this. YouTube is going to explode. I have seen some really interesting like public town meetings. Just, this is not one of them in terms no. of getting onto YouTube. <laughs> I've been signing into. I've actually been signing into the East Montpelier or listening to. Them. Well, my wife's on the select board, but even if she doesn't, it's. Hanging out at home with a beer. That's what you do in East Montpelier for excitement. Okay. They probably can't hear us, but it's, it's also almost a NIMBY thing. It's, you know, hey, if they had the cell phone tower, it would be great for me up on North Street. It would be good for you, Gianna. Gianna, you'd probably have better cell phone service, but you couldn't see the tower and it'd be far enough away from the from the increased in property value or those that really want it. But if it was, if I had to look at it, I, you know, I wouldn't be too happy either. Yeah, I think that that's a, a maybe we're not allowed to talk if there's not a quorum yeah, you're actually. Right. You're, right. You're, right. you're right. I wanted you're to right. talk, but I'm like, oh, I'm really allowed to. Yeah. <laughs> They're clustering around the computer. Are they moving the deck chairs on the Titanic? Hi, since I'm not sure what's happening, I just want to say that this whole NIMBY thing is a, is a really unfortunate framing for no, people I, I, who are yeah. for people who are you know live in a neighborhood who are expressing concern. As soon as someone starts framing it as NIMBY, those people are judged. You know, very negatively as people who are kind of like just protecting themselves and not really concerned about anybody else. And and maybe some of those people are like that, but I, I think it's an unfortunate framing. And I don't think I really think that it. I, I, uh, I, I agree with you. It, it's and and I didn't want it in the neighborhood either. I live on the other side of the mountain. I don't. I didn't want it. Um, you know, on Jacobs or Horn of the Moon. You're right. I'm just saying that I was reacting to what Gianna said about some people want it, the silent majority or the silent, those that are silent right. rather. And, that, and I use the wrong phrase, but I just was referring to that. Yeah, you know, an, another thing is that, I mean, imagine if you're a homeowner and let's say that, that the, you know, that your property is worth $400,000 and there's a cell tower that's, you know, 300 feet from your kitchen uh, window and you know, you have appraisers from the bank or, or, or professional appraisers come and they say your $400,000 house, because you really can't enjoy the property the way you did, blah, 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 is now worth $300,000. Okay. Who, where's the liability lie for something like that? If it's unclear whether 
property values can or cannot be part of the town, uh, you know, plan. It's like, does the town have any liability for for not driving a stake in the ground around this? If it's unclear, it just seems like it creates a liability for the town one way or the other. Uh, and I can tell you, at least on Jacobs Road, the tower, the 250 foot tower, whatever it is that was proposed, would not have in, improved property values here. Uh, and it would have been a significant, um, you know, downside for everybody who lives in the Horn of the Moon area. So this is a big deal. And I understand. Um, I am. I am taking notes for what you're saying, but I just want to make sure that our other planning commissioners can hear you and that they're oh, back on okay. board. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I thought so I was just hold on. Right okay. Yeah, we, yeah, well, we I am taking notes that they will see them. So you are on record. <laughs> we're capturing okay. it, but I just want to make sure. Zach, Claris, you're nodding. Are you yes, with us again? We, we, we are back and we think we are, we're, we're going to try plan B and hopefully this will, yeah, this will okay. be stable. Great. So I'm sorry to interrupt you, Ron. You can continue now. <laughs> I, I, I pretty much said, you know, I, I'm not sure who heard or who didn't hear. So, but I think I, I'm just trying to make a point that, that I understand that there are questions about how to determine the impact on property value. And it, there may not be a clear answer tonight, but I think that it would be an important question to answer from people who do that for a living and try to see if there is a way of determining that uh, rather than having it be an open-ended question. Because I do think um, that, that um, towers can have potentially adverse effect on property value. And I think it does create a potential liability for the town. I have a, a question as the as the newest least tenured member of the planning commission. So hopefully somebody more tenured than me can answer this. But carrying that um, maybe like an analogous example forward, Ron, if you have an adjacent private property owner who say decides to clear cut their property and they are part of your view shed, and that would technically potentially impact. D do we have anywhere in our our town? Uh, plan that would limit what a private property owner could do if it impacted an adjacent person's I mean just trying to think of like we I don't think that we would be able to do it for one type of infrastructure or use and not the other unless it's captured somewhere else or if it is captured somewhere else it would be great precedent to set for this Ron. Are you asking me that question? I'm asking anybody who might know if that is in the plan. <laughs> There, there's a good example of that in the Horn of the Moon. A number of years ago, there was 40 acres clear cut on the ridge of Long Meadow. Uh, and the owner of that property was in the current use program and they were fined for what they did because it was outside of, of what was part of their, their, their uh, forest management plan. Uh, I don't know if the town has any regulations, uh, but I think it's a really good question that you asked. Lauren, I am not aware of anything in the town plan or the zoning that would, you know, would address that. Look at anyone else's. Besides just your basic setbacks and building heights and, you know, residential versus industrial uses in different parts of town. Um, yeah, unless there's um, a statewide environmental regulation like current use or just, you know, forest best management practices, I can't really think of anything either. Yeah, I don't think there's anything, I mean, you talk about something clear cutting, what about that adversely affected your property where all of a sudden now you had these runoffs that you normally wouldn't have because the forest was absorbing it. But I don't think we, I, I don't recall of anything in the town plan, but um, it would be detrimental. So if, in a DRB, there is a part, well, uh, you know, personally affecting your property, but not your view or the count the view or anything. Crowding, you know, like same thing. Of a big 
a farmer next door to you builds a big barn in his field and mm -hmm. was blocking your field. You yeah. can't do nothing about that either. Mm -hmm. So, puts up a silo. Can't stop them. Yeah. So, I do want to get us back to the question of do we, do, you know, do, do we, would it be helpful to do a straw poll just on sort of where people are on do we want to, you know, make make changes to to address property values? Can I say just one more thing sure. first? Yeah. So um, I know that um, some of these, you know, a discussion about some of these issues can be pretty unsatisfactory based on, you know, our limits as a town. Um, but, you know, when I get back to thinking about what the amendment to the town plan is for, you know, it's maybe two parts is it's one is an educational piece for, you know, town, um, town folks and for people who are on the uh, planning commission in the future. Um, but it's also because there are these specific criteria that the PUC can take into consideration um, when they're you know, when they get an application for a new cell tower, and those criteria are specific. Um, and property values and, and health are not, not on there. Um, so if we want, I feel like, you know, we could talk, we could potentially talk about property values as an educational piece, but it's not necessarily going to be you know, it's not going to be considered by the PUC anyway. So if that's the leverage that we're trying to exercise, um, you know, I don't think that's that's the reason to add it to the amendment. Hi, it's Kari. Is there any value to adding it just to um, to indicate that it, it's something that property owners have a concern about just as a starting place? So yeah, maybe as like on the educational side of things, um, you know, maybe that is a possibility. I still think of what, you know, Zach was saying earlier about there just being methodological issues with some of the studies, you know, they're just, they're just gaps, but um, you know, maybe there's a place for acknowledging that folks are concerned about this. I mean, if we're going to talk about property values, I think we also have to be able to talk about the property, the impact on property value to the to the landowner who's trying to construct the tower. You know, the when when the when the when the landowner on Jacobs Road who was going to put in that tower, sold those rights for $40,000. They gave up a development right with a net present value of somewhere between two and 300,000. Now, if we're gonna talk property values, that's yeah. gotta be part of it too. Yeah. I would also imagine we'd have to include something about property values for adjacent properties that didn't have adequate cell service and would be improved by Having a cell service. Yeah. I am, yeah, I think I'm hearing from members of the public here a desire to have the voice heard in the plan. And I'm also hearing from the commissioners like the other, like some of the complexity of these issues or concerns. So I, I don't think we can resolve it tonight, but it does flag for me like maybe that is some language that we do need to explore a few sentences around um, and in the educational side, property values and the impact of cell towers on property values can be mixed. And we have some members of the public that are concerned and some of the public that could benefit and um, we recognize that as a planning commission. And maybe maybe we can leave it at that. Maybe we need to massage that. But I think staying silent when we're hearing from the public that they would like that reflected somewhere maybe is not acknowledging what folks are asking. But we, we should also walk the balance in the line of reflecting 
sort of the other other considerations that Spencer and Zach brought up and how do folks feel about that? Hi, this is Kari again. I think, um, you know, it's nice to have that acknowledged somewhere that there's a piece uh, both for some people it could improve their property values with self-service, but for others, it could be very detrimental. And But I think what really rubs me the wrong way is that when you have something endorsed by the town that's been researched as serving the best amount of people, doing a benefit, and it's kind of like eminent domain, this we've decided, your government, <laughs> that it, this is good for the town versus a single person just saying, I want to do this on my property. And it, it hasn't been, you know, something part of the town plan. Um, that's really, I think, I don't, I'm sorry if I bring this conversation to a different place again, but I, that really bothers me. It feels like vigilante, let's, I'm doing this for the town. I'm just going to get the town, the cell service going. And uh, it just feels like this should be something that is, you know, organically driven by the town, by the townspeople to resolve their problems and not having individual property owners take it upon themselves. And I understand there's money to be made there, but um, I don't know, there's just something about it that just feels very problematic. So that is, so, so balancing these sorts of things is the entire purpose of having this in the town plan. Um, and that is the entire purpose of having, you know, better sites and worse sites to be able to try to steer towers to areas where they would be, have a, a smaller impact. And so I guess my question to you, Kari, is so what, what would you put in the plan that would, that would accomplish that in a way that it's not being accomplished now? Well, and I'm, I'm not well versed on how things work. But um, in a fantasy that I have would be that I don't know whether it would be people in the know who get appointed to, like you had said early on, one of the actions was to scout the town to see where the dead spots are. Is there an agreed upon place that would, um, that, you know, I think maybe there'll be dead spots in Vermont that it, it's maybe part of how Vermont is going to be. But I think there, there's potential, to, I think, to resolve a lot of dead spots in the state by finding places that aren't offensive to anyone. There's so much undeveloped land in Vermont. I can't imagine there's not a way to explore uh, something that would have agreement by a lot, almost all parties about a siting for a cell tower, like to have something I don't know, more more professionalized, I guess, in the decision in this where the sites should be. There is, Zach, you had mentioned it in your presentation, this action that we've put in the plan to consider whether to do a more systematic review of preferential sites. Correct me if I am using the wrong terminology here. Um, and Kari, we, we talked about that uh, being maybe beyond our capacity at the moment, but it's definitely captured in the plan as a potential next step um, to do more intentional and collaborative community-based planning. Um, and I, I wonder if that is reflective of something that you're, you're hoping is in the plan and, and I'm saying actually maybe is in the plan. Um, yeah, so I'll stop talking there. And Zach, correct me if I'm misrepresenting that action step. No, I, I think that's a, I think, it, I think it's a pretty fair representation of it. Are you willing to take people's comments? Because I understand this is purely, it should be the just the board. So are you willing to hear other comments? Um. We've let a bunch of other people comment, so it would be unfair to not let you comment. Okay. Um, Zach, I, I think um, you're, the point you just made, and gee, 
Anna? Or something. Kiana, but it's fine. Whatever you want to say. <laughs> um, it, I think you're, the point you're making that by moving forward, finding uh, appropriate sites, that doing that in a, a systematic way has the potential for addressing Kara's concerns because it um, locates those spots that Kara is talking about it, it, the best we can. The places where it will spread out the availability of the signals and be uh, least obtrusive to our views and our neighborhoods. So I think maybe those last two comments for me move us in the direction of the next steps that will, um, with what you have pr proposed and provided for us tonight, help us move forward. Thank you, Alice. So I think I'm trying. I'm trying to get you know, keep us on on track. I, so I know we did we did discuss the possibility of doing a study at at some length. Um, the The conclusion at that point was that this would yeah you know, this would be such a significant undertaking that we didn't want to basically put this amendment on hold for probably a year or two um, while we while we tried to secure funding, secured experts, um, did the work we were going to need to do. Um, you know, clearly that could, if anyone would like to, you know, if anyone in the commission would like to challenge that, you know, you, there is a forum to do that, but um, Zach, that, Zach, this, this, that is where we left it. Zach, this seems like a perfect action item within the town plan for either revision or I don't know whether we can put action items now um, that need to be addressed going forward in the town plan um, when we have that whole list but that seems to be the, the perfect place for it and then so, it's, it's yeah. so Scott we do have an action item to figure out whether we want whether we want to do this this kind of study um, are you are you talking about having an action item specifically to do the study? Yeah, it, it, it's not always it's, it's not always acted upon, but um, it would it would almost be up to the select board probably with funding or um, yeah, a little, a little stronger teeth. I think I think this this all makes a lot of sense. I mean, what is what is the least obtrusive place with the most coverage that's, that's just all been mentioned. I do. It's my recollection that another reason why we are leaning toward leaving it as consider um, is because it was worth a longer conversation. Um, one of the points that I remember being brought up is concern that uh, the year after that study is concluded, um, it will be, you know, out of date because of the next cell tower that goes up um, in a neighboring town um, or in town. Um, so, yeah, um, I think that we also like didn't necessarily, haven't necessarily talked through, you know, what the true uh, scope of that would be or, or, you know, who does that kind of work in Vermont. Um, so I, I'm just trying to recollect why we landed on consider um, instead of making it a, a definite. Fair enough. Yeah, and I don't know if I was um, suggesting any edits to that either. I think I was more calling folks' attention to the fact that that is a new action item that we've put on there. And then 
mentioning to the commission, it sounds like there's interest from the public that we should consider it. <laughs> we should take that action and, and talk about it and put it on our agenda. Um, Cause there might be interest. Like Zach said, we don't really want to hold up these amendments because a plant, you know, tower could go in tomorrow. We'd like to have some standards in there. So like, maybe we could process these with whatever feedback and, you know, get them to the select board, but then have this consideration of, do we want more explicit standards of preferential sites? Do we want that to be sort of a public participation process and explore that as per that action item, whether we want to go down that road or not. But it sounds like having that action item and highlighting that, that maybe is assuaging some of Alice's concerns and may, maybe some of Kari's, I'm not sure. Yeah, so I would, I would like to try to keep moving us along. I don't know if we, I was hoping to see if we would be able to have a chance to, to see if we'd be able to vote this out or to, yeah, tonight or not. I'm not sure that we will. Um, we, we, we continue to go around in circles on the question of, do we want to put something in on property values? Um, and I, so I would like to come back to that. Um, do we, I think it probably makes sense just to get it. I, mean, I don't have a good sense of where, where we are as a whole. And so I think it might be helpful to do a straw poll of just, you know, do we, you know, yes or no, do we open things back up to speak to property values? And yeah, Mark Ruflaris, do you want to start us? I'll vote no. Oh, yeah. No, I'll vote. Okay, um, I'm a no as well. Um, Lauren? Uh, no. Spencer? No. Gianna? Yes. And Scott? I'm going to say yes. <laughs> okay, so we've got, it's not unanimous, but we do have a pretty strong lead. Yeah, yeah, on the commission. Um, I would, I would propose having this be something that, you know, gets, gets considered with the next town plan, but that maybe not open back up right now. Do we, I know, I know we did receive some comments on health impacts. Um, I know we also talked about that at length in the in, initial process. And that that was a pretty, that seemed to be pretty cut and dry that we were not, you know, that that wasn't something that we could touch. Um, I don't know if, are there, are there any other issues that people think we need to discuss on the health question? I'm seeing some shaking heads. So we, so we still have this, the question of, and I'm just going back through my notes to see what else I wanted to look at. Um, do we, you know, do people feel, you know, do we, do we want to you know, continue looking at reopening the question of a, a placement study or are we, you know, you know, do people feel good with what we have for the action item right now? Happy with the way the action item is now. Yeah. yeah. We've got a, a the, the thumb. I, I, I'm not sure that was a totally clear yes or no question. So is this thumbs up for as it is now? Okay. So are there, so we're actually, we actually may be closer than, than I thought. Are there, are there other issues that I have missed that we, that we want to address where we might want to make changes or do we want to, to send the proposed amendments to the select board as is? I'm not, are we, have we been going on too long and have we beaten everyone down? <laughs> Make a motion to set, uh, send them as is. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to send the, the 
the amendment to the select board as is. Do we have a second? Second. Clara seconds that. All right, motion for Mark. Clara second. Do we have any further discussion on this? Not seeing. I, I, I realize that we have we have yeah. talked around this. While I will give you know, any to, one last chance. Do we have any further discussion on this? No, I mean we, we, we really want to get some of the things on the books. I mean you okay. don't know what you don't know what's coming up next week, next month, yeah. and um and and to keep delaying it for another two weeks, four weeks, six months, it's important to get some some more language into our town plan, which is that, I think the reason why we we want to move this along. So I am not I'm not seeing any further discussion. So I'll take you all all in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, eyes have it. All right, so this can this can move on to the select board and move on towards approval, hopefully. And they'll have their own hearing. They will have their own hearing. That's yes, yeah, that's right. The, 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 the select board will also then hold hearings. You know, on this. So we are not, you know, the, the planning commission's portion is done for the moment, but we uh, this this will move on to the select board. They will hold hearings, and we will have more work to do if they send it back to us requesting more work. I I want to thank you for having this hearing, and then your meeting, and the thoughtfulness with which you process the the uh, comments, and I totally support your moving it on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alice. We've, we've given this a lot of thought, and a, and a lot of us have internally given it thought. You know, some of us are neighbors right around the block, and it's and it's serious, and it's, it's weighing on us. And we've and we we're really concerned on and and value your opinions and those that are not joining us tonight. Um, so we do appreciate all your feedback and your attention. That was clear. Thank you. I wanted to say thank you too. Thanks. Thank you very much, Carrie. All right, so I think we will move into the very boring part of the meeting. No, do we do we have any updates from the Capital Improvement Committee? Oh, this is my favorite part of life. No, <laughs> we have not. We have not had a capital improvement um, meeting since. And I'll save. And I'll save your. I'll save you some oxygen and we'll move on to the next topic. No, we have not had an energy committee meeting since either. And I'll rest at that. Thank you very much, Scott. Um, Mark, anything from Brazil? Yeah, Rose? Rose. We've had three meetings in the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, first two, actually, we just, we worked over June 32, cleaning up where they took the ash trees out, mm -hmm. cleaned all the shrub underneath, from the trees in the parking lot. And then they had a they had a meeting. I didn't go to that for the Michael Michael Dwayne. Quite a few people showed up. Okay. Michael Dwayne, yeah. Uh, Bruce Chapel, Colin Blackwell, uh, and some others came, and and I think maybe is going to be spending some more time revising plan. Change the plan. That's what we're talking. We're talking about today. It's neat. Instant, so I'm gonna refine it a little bit. Oh, no. right. Thank you, Mark. Thank, thank you for saving the update so that we have <laughs> some updates. <laughs> um, Claris, anything? I, I do have something for the Regional Planning Commission. Claris, do I think for the Regional Planning Commission? Uh, there's a meeting on the 10th. Uh, Spencer, I will forward you that agenda. Um, I don't know if he's officially, sorry, Bruce just perked up in the back of the room, so. Bruce looks like a puppy that's just, just <laughs> where someone just puts some bacon on the stove. Um, but on the agenda is a presentation on S-148, which is a bill on environmental justice presented by Senator Ron Hinsdale. Um, Spencer, you're, you are a rep? Uh, not officially at this point, I don't believe. I'm... Oh well, thank congratulations, thank you. Seriously, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am. I missed the last meeting. I am usually very facetious, and I like to make comments. But truly, thank you for 
Thank you for representing us. That's that's wonderful. Thank you so much for uh, for <laughs> stepping up. No, I'm I'm being very sincere. Well, you really have to do it now, Spencer. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> we'll camp outside your house if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're not going to threaten people to get them to join committees. Um, yeah, I do. The one other update I do have from the Regional Planning Commission is that there is a they are going to be running a workshop on energy planning on May 18th from 12 to 1 30. I forget which day of the week the 18th is. Wednesday. Like it's a Wednesday. So I think that's yeah, because the fourth fourth was yesterday, so that would be two weeks from yesterday. Um I will forward the information about that around. Um, but that is obviously open to anyone. I will also forward that to the energy committee. Um, and that's, but that's all I have there. Um, so we can move on to the ZA and DRB report. And we have a number of, I guess it is, it is permit time of year, isn't it? I don't, I don't know if there are any comments on any, anything, you know, interesting well, here. DRB had a meeting this week. Approved. Did they? <laughs> so we do have an update from our from folks in the DRB. Looking, looking right now. Um, Warren was also there. Um, but yeah, we had an application for two dugouts at U32, um, an after the fact permit for um, Dion equipment sales, Dion uh, on 75 Fair Road. That was approved. Um, next use approval. Um, also approved an application for a barn and site, barn and site improvement um, at Orchard Valley Waldorf School, and also approved uh, two new buildings at Land Care Materials on Town Hill Road. Uh, we also did a sketch plan review for a two lot subdivision on Quaker Road, um, and it gave that the thumbs up. So you guys have been busy. Lauren, I don't know if you had anything to add that you wanted to add since you're actually there. You are, you know, we don't, we sort of forget that, oh, we have a new DRB member, so I want to not overshadow you, but you don't have to. No, no, thanks for covering, Clarice. All right, so that's, you know, I believe that is it for our updates. So the next, you know, the last piece is to look at the minutes from the April 21st meeting. So we talked about the hearing, we talked about um, the starting of data needs for the energy plan and public outreach. Zach, I will make a motion to accept the minutes. Thank you, Scott. With the motion, do we have a second? A second. A second. All right. Any discussion? We have, we are still able to get changes in if, if there is any discussion or anything else. Scott, not seeing any. Um. All right. All all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, and it's passed. Thank you very much. So last item is other business. Um, so I forgot on the CRPC you know, updates. I did also speak with Sam Lash last, you know, you know last week. Um, so we are moving. I can I can do further updates at our next meeting. No, I'm not seeing any other business. I, I will defer to Mark for the last piece of business that he hadn't been at a few meetings. So I will defer to Mark on this last. Mark, item. Mark, Mark makes a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Scott seconds. Not an item for discussion. All those in favor? 
Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you very much, everyone. We are adjourned. It is eight four. Adios. Cinco de Mayo. Have a good one, everyone.